My mother is was um, born in Jamaica to parents who were, her father was Chinese and her mother was African Jamaican. And um, my grandmother and my grandfather um, split when my mother was three years old and my grandmother took my mother from her father and she never saw him again. So now you have a three-year-old girl child who was never able to see her father again. My mother immigrated to the United States in 1945 under the Chinese immigration quota. But from that time until whenever, of course, she'd had no contact with her father. Somewhere around the age of um, almost 16 years old, she did find one of the shops that her father owned and uh, went in and learned that her father had returned to China permanently, was never coming back. The impact of this is that most people don't know that the reason why the Chinese are in the Caribbean and in Latin and Central America is because when the English abolished slavery in 1838, the Africans were no longer cutting cane. They, the British and the um, American sugar companies imported cheap labor from China. So Chinese laborers came in, Indian laborers came in as indentured workers. And what they did was sign three-year contracts, work, cut, sh cut sugar cane, and then sometimes they would return home to India, China. Sometimes they stayed. Uh, by the time my grandfather got to Jamaica in 1905, he was 15 years old, and he came to work on the plantation. He did, and then he took the proceeds and opened a little shop, a retail shop, sold dry goods, food, whatever. And this is how the Chinese eventually got to the point where on, uh, in Jamaica they controlled more than 80% of all the retail trade. You saw it in Jamaica, you saw it in Trinidad and Tobago. A lot of it happened in Panama, Guyana, Honduras. Um, those Chinese, my branch of Chinese, my tribe of Chinese are called Hakka, H-A-K-K-A. -K -K that means guest. They were originally from northern China, were driven south by Genghis Khan, and they settled in southern China. They are the only tribe of Chinese where the women did not bind their feet. Binding feet was a sign of um, wealth. If you grew long nails, someone had to feed you. You wouldn't even go to the bathroom on your own. Someone took care of that. That was a sign of luxury and wealth. Women binding their feet kept their feet beautiful and tiny, but they couldn't walk. So they were carried everywhere. That can't happen unless you're wealthy. So the women in my tribe never bound their feet because they always were seeking prosperity and working. So having said that, the Hakka people, uh, as a rule, travel around the world. Anywhere there is a nation, you're going to find Hakka Chinese people because they are the, uh, the retail merchants, the entrepreneurs, always in pursuit of making money. That's how my grandfather got to China. Uh, there, I mean, got to Jamaica. There are lots of Jamaican Chinese roaming North America. You might not think so, but two names I could give you very quickly would be Naomi Campbell and Tyson Beckford. I am without question African American. Uh, no, I am a black person. I'm also a Chinese person. I'm also a Harlemite. I'm also a native of, you know, United States. This is where I'm from. I think that um, it's important especially for African-Americans to know that we did not begin and end with slavery. Many of us define our existence with slavery as either being pre-slavery or post-slavery. My concern about that, and it has always been my concern, is that by focusing so much as that being almost the, almost the birth of African-Americans, the think about conceptually, the birth of African Americans, then we keep tying ourselves to slavery. When what we, I think, should do is spend more time focusing on the continuum. We were the first people on this planet. We Africans. We're still here. Our continent has more resources than any other continent on this planet. Everybody wants to exploit Africa, including, frankly, the Chinese right now. 
And what I would like for us as, as an African people to understand is that not only is there great power and great sense of self by being of African descent, if we don't make sure that our next generations understand that we are proud to be African, there's nothing better than being African. If we don't stop thinking of ourselves as being defined by slavery, we will always, always be fighting for our place in the world.